We have our first official depth chart of the season as BYU gets ready for their season opener at USF. What to make of that? What did Kalani Sitake have to say during his weekly press conference? We've got all of that, as well as a new opportunity to support BYU football players via name, image, and likeness agreements they have signed with a new company. We've got all of that ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making us here on Locked On Cougars, your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. We're very, very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around the network is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. We know there are a myriad of other BYU podcasts out there and a thank you to all of you who continue to support this podcast on a daily basis. Our goal here simply stated my goal as your host is to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room by giving you all the BYU news you can handle every single day in 20 to 30 minutes. It's bite sized relative to some other podcasts. We want you guys to be up to speed and we do it on a daily basis. For those of you who may be checking us out for the very first time by a quick introduction, my name is Jake once again. Again, I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City, Utah, call sign KZNS, uh, working as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning drive. And then I spend my off hours as a dad and husband and also your host right here on Locked on Cougars. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. BYU has officially revealed their first depth chart of the season. We're going to try something new here, folks. Give this a shot. Hey, there we go. Is that showing up? Oh, maybe not. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. There is the depth chart. Uh, this is kind of a new territory for me, uh, figuring all this out. But BYU has revealed their depth chart. Hopefully, you guys can see that. I'm going to uh, take away my overlay here so you guys can see that a little clearer. Hopefully, that comes through clearly if you're watching this on YouTube. But BYU's depth chart, I'm not going to lie, there's not necessarily, I think, a major omission or glaring absence from the depth chart, if I'm being frank. I think the biggest thing is we all expected the quarterback position. Uh, you can see right there at the top, Jaron Hall's number one. Jacob Conover's QB2 for BYU. The running back position, I guess there'd be a mild uh, upset, I guess. I, I don't know upset's the right word, but Running back is led by Christopher Brooks, Lopini Katoa as RB2 there. But then Miles Davis, running back three. I think a lot of people had pinned their hopes that Jackson McChesney might be that third string running back for BYU. But it appears that Miles Davis made enough of, an, enough of an impression to be the third string back there. I'm also a little bit surprised that BYU did not list a fullback position on their depth chart here. But they did put Mason Wake, as you'll see here. Hopefully you can see that down right down uh a, a tight end. Mason Wake is listed as a co-starter at tight end alongside Isaac Rex and Dallin Holker. Uh, I would fully expect if BYU does go to a heavy package where they have a fullback, Mason Wake is that guy. Uh, Houston Hay Muley is probably the number two guy in that circumstance. A few of you reached out on social media yesterday and said, hey, Jake, where's Houston? Well, he's not on the depth chart, but uh, Aaron Roderick on the Coordinator's Corner show on BYU TV did acknowledge that Houston will be part of the travel group that's going to USF. He says he's just a little bit behind these other tight ends on BYU's roster. And like I said, if they had a fullback position listed here, I would likely guess that you have Mason Wake 1, Houston Hay Muley 2, and Houston's going to play, folks. Uh, I don't think you have to worry about that. He was going to get his spots. Uh, now, the most interesting thing for me, I'm going to scroll down here, uh, is that is that the offensive line positions. Blake Freeland de declared number one starter at left tackle. Clark Barrington, your left guard, that's not a surprise on the left side there. The surprises come with the oars with center, right guard, and right tackle. At center, you have Connor Pay listed uh, with an oar next to his name with Joe Tukuafu. That's been a back and forth battle all camp long. Uh, Joe has dealt with some issues in terms of his availability during training camp, but when he's been uh, available during training camp, he's been very, very good in pushing Connor Pay for playing time and apparently could end up as the starter for BYU at center. 
center. If he does not start at center and he's available this week, Joe, as you see, is listed as a co-starter at right guard alongside Campbell Barrington. Funny enough, Campbell Barrington, as you look up at left tackles, listed as the backup left tackle for BYU. The one thing about Campbell is his versatility is going to serve him well for BYU. He can start essentially any of the four positions not named center on BYU's offensive line, and I would expect if any injuries hit at any point this season, Campbell Barrington likely is the first guy in at almost any one of those spots despite who might be listed as a backup, like a Tyler Little here at left guard. It wouldn't surprise me if, if Campbell were to replace his older brother, Clark, if, if it comes to that. Now, right tackle is a little bit intriguing. Harris Lachance currently listed as a co-starter alongside Kingsley Suamataia and Braden Kime at right tackle. All three of them have impressed, but Harris Lachance and all of the media portions, all the media viewing portions of training camp, he was at right guard. So I'm actually, frankly, stunned that Joe Tuguafu and Campbell Barrington are listed as co-starters at right guard. It actually leads me to think that BYU may be playing a little possum with this. I'm not trying to break news or anything or give the uh, advantage to USF, but here's the chance, based on what I observed and what I had heard, has almost exclusively worked at, at, at right guard with the ones on offense for BYU. So Maybe in the last week or so, the BYU moved him back out to right tackle and really likes him there. We'll see what shakes out. But it was very interesting to see all the oars there on the center, right guard, and right tackle positions. Now, scrolling back up over the defense here uh, is I'm not surprised by much of this on the defense. Earl Tuyo T. Mariner is your strong end. Uh, Blake Mangelson and John Nelson backing him up. That strong end position is essentially a, a defensive tackle playing at defensive end for BYU. They play to the field side. The, the goal is on rundowns, first and second down. They come in and help set the edge in the run game. Now, as BYU gets later on where they need to get more pass rushers on the field, Tyler Batty is going to be on the field. You see him at defensive end here, number 92. Fisher Jackson is back up. Logan Latui, I'm I'm actually surprised number three there with Alden Tofa at defensive end. Now the opposite end, that's when the more the pass rush comes in. Tyler Batty flips over to that with Alden Tofa as his backup or Fisher Jackson. That's more of the pass rush. That's a third down when you need to get after the quarterback. You bring these guys on and really get after it. On the interior, Gabe Summers and Lorenzo Fawatea really went back and forth throughout all of training camp at the defensive tackle position. Uh, Bruce Mitchell and Hunter Greer probably still very young in their careers. One of freshmen, yeah, Bruce Mitchell, a true freshman. Hunter Greer, a redshirt freshman. And then opposite that, Caden Hawes and Josh Larson are your established uh, one-two, I feel like, at defense at, at the nose tackle position because they put an oar here with Atunai Samahe. I'm, I'm scrolling over this. Hopefully you can see that. Mahe is not healthy, folks. I don't expect not Atunai Samahe to play this week. I, I'm, I'm not trying to break news or anything, but I haven't seen him dressed up in any of the media portions of camp and everything I've heard from our practice insiders out there is that he's not full go. We heard uh, from Elisa Tuiaki during BYU photo day that he had shoulder surgery in the off season and he's not uh, been cleared from that. I don't think full go. So I'm surprised he's actually even on this list, but I actually like the depth and breadth of BYU's defensive line. Look at this 288 pounds for Earl Tuyo T. Mariner, Tyler Batty, 275, Gabe Summers, 295, Lorenzo Fawatea, 310, Bruce Mitchell, 300, Caden Haas, 320, Josh Larson, 305. These are the weights that BYU's defensive line needed to play at a year ago when guys like Josh Larson were tipping at 260. I think Tyler Batty was 260 last year in his own right. Uh, Gabe Summers, I think, was like somewhere in the 280 range. Like They have bulked up along this defensive line. Now, uh, at the linebacker positions, not surprised by any of this. Ben Bywater, a starter, Max Tooley, Keenan Peely, Peyton Wilgar. None of that is a surprise to me. The good news is I think there are a number of guys as backups that are going to play a, a more key role this year. I think BYU feels better prepared if injuries do hit this linebacking core like they did a year ago to insert guys and expect little to no fall off from uh, guys like Tavita Gagne, Jackson Kafusi, Pepe Tanuvasa, now back at Mike, linebacker behind Keenan Peely. The opportunity is there for all these guys to have a bigger role and maybe create a little more of a rotation to keep guys fresher and hopefully thereby avoid extra injuries for BYU. Now in the defensive secondary, you have the Cinco position, the nickel position, and then obviously the, the safeties as well as the cornerbacks. Uh, these are all specialty packages with the Cinco and the nickel, but the nice part is I think you've got very clear delineation of who the starters are in the secondary, and it's not all that surprising. George Udo is very good in the specialty packages. It's crazy to think he's already a junior, but he's going to take on a bigger role for BYU this year now that he's fully healthy. Ammon Hanneman is your number one at strong safety. Micah Harper, number two behind him, opposite of Malik Moore and Hayden Livingston at free safety. I think the depth at safety is actually going to be a strength for BYU this year. They've got more athleticism back there. 
than they have in the past, uh, and that's going to help them on that front. And then at cornerback, D'Angelo Mandel right here as your starter opposite Caleb Hayes. And we're going to talk about uh, BYU's team captains here in a moment. I think that was a very impressive deal that Caleb Hayes was named a team captain. But Gabe Judy Lally, the transfer from uh, Vanderbilt, back up to Caleb Hayes. I think he's going to factor in as, as a heavy rotator for BYU, as well as Jacob Robinson and even Jacob Boren, who you see listed at the nickel position. So, uh, like I said, there's nothing too crazy about all of this. The specialist positions, Jake Oldre, Justin Smith, Cash Peters, P Peterman as your kickers. Uh, your uh, long snappers, Austin Riggs, Britton Hogan. A bit surprising there's not an or there because there was an or there last year. Austin Riggs apparently has won the job as BYU's lead deep snapper. And then Ryan Rico is your punter once again. Not surprising there. But the one surprise, I guess, in the special teams is right here. Hobbs Nyberg and Talmadge Gunther are going to be your one-two tandem at kick return and punt return, according to the depth chart. Is all of this 100% accurate? Well, I know BYU in the past has not necessarily uh, given us completely accurate information. They've less, left guys who were lost to season-ending injuries on depth charts. At times, I feel like BYU just uh, kind of throws it at the sports information department and says, here, throw that up there. And I'm like, well, that's not completely accurate, but that's where we stand with the depth chart. Now, with regards to this opener against USF, I want you guys to hear from Kalani Satake, BYU head coach. He spoke to the media uh, during his weekly press conference yesterday. I uh, wanted to get you guys some comments from his opening statement about the game against USF, as well as a couple of questions I had for him as well. So here you go, BYU head coach Kalani Satake. Game week's here. We're really excited about it. So I'm um, looking forward to getting the team ready and then um... – you know, just polishing things up for this week and, and make make the uh, make sure that we're ready for this uh, this trip. And so we're heading out a couple of days early, like we normally do when we go out out east. And um, we'll have uh, you know an opportunity to practice a couple times out there and uh, in in that environment. And looking forward to the matchup. Uh, expecting a really good, uh, well coached team from South Florida. Uh, we don't know a lot about them because they have some new, even though they have a lot of returning production, um, there's a lot of players that, that played quite a bit last year that are back. Uh, they've, asked, uh, they've also added uh, some transfers on uh, the transfer portal. So there's some new bodies there, specifically with the quarterback, with Bohannon, uh, someone that we're familiar with that has a lot of uh, ability and um, athleticism, can throw the ball. He's, he's a seasoned vet. And so um, looking at, 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 at that combined with there's a lot of unknown still. We don't know much about what they do on offense or what they do on defense with the new coordinators that they have. Um, we'll have to be ready for everything, and we're prepping that way. That, that happens sometimes in season openers. Last year against Arizona, it's a very similar thing where we didn't know a, a whole lot uh, going into that game. Uh, I, I think it's very similar. We have an idea, but they could do a lot of different things probably some of the things that were successful for what they saw last year against us. And uh, so we're working towards all that and, and trying to cover all our bases with it and uh, looking forward to the matchup. Though I think uh, once the game starts, we'll, we'll do our best with the scheme and strategies and, and let the boys just play and, and settle it on the field. So I, I know our guys are looking forward to the matchup. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Rain is in the forecast potentially for Saturday for the game. Are you going to do anything in particular to prepare for that or adjust to it in game? Well, we've had some games where it's been uh, some practices already that's been kind of wet, you know, and, and uh, had a scrimmage that was kind of wet. So I don't know if we really need to wet the field or, you know, put, put the, the ball in the bucket of water. But, um, we just show up and play. They have to play in the same weather that we play in, too. So, um, you know, if, if it's rain, then great. If it's snow, we can deal with all that stuff. We're just going to go out there and play and have fun and whatever shows up. Can't simulate the wind. I can't go put up a big old fan and have Rico kick into it. You know, you just have to deal with it. So that, that's – can't control all of it. But the stuff that we can't control is how we're playing technique sound on the on, on the field. And if we're – Making sure we're minimizing all the mistakes, trying to do all the all the fundamental football, um, just play great fundamental football. We can control all that stuff, whether the field is wet or not. That's not in my control. Lavelle could could control that more than I did, and I haven't figured that one out yet. I also wanted to ask you: Last year, you faced Gary Bohannon when he was a Baylor. What do you remember about him as a quarterback, and what do you expect from Saturday against him? 
Well, his poise, first of all. He, he's been in in tough situations and helped his team win, uh, you know, Big 12 championship. So it's not like going against our defense. And he's he has experience against our defense. So it's not like he he's a guy that's kind of brand new to the, to the game. I think when you're dealing with someone that you haven't seen, there's a lot of film with him. So um, he, his poise is the thing that I was really impressed with the first time we played him. And I saw and I continue to see him do that in every game that he played in. So uh, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a lot that's going to surprise him. Uh, he has some new weapons to work with and, and a new team and a new coordinator that we, we you know, we're, we're kind of guessing on what we're going to see. But um, he's really talented and, and I think I think we're going to get his best shot. We just need to make sure that he doesn't have as much success against us last time we saw him. There you go, BYU head coach Kalani Satake, and you heard him talk about the fact that Lavelle could control the weather, and there are some famous stories about Lavelle, wind howling, raining, all kinds of stuff, and guys are like, I don't want to practice out in that, and they're like, well, if Lavelle shows up and it's going like that, it, we're gonna we're not going to practice, and then Lavelle would show up, and magically it would clear out, and suddenly it was like a bright, beautiful day, or just the wind stopped and the rain stopped, so... Lavelle's got some legendary stories about him, and apparently, according to Kalani, he has not figured out the secrets to controlling the weather that Lavelle Edwards once upon a time had. And that, it's just kind of one of those funny things about uh, the legend of Lavelle Edwards that exists. By the way, we're celebrating the 50 year anniversary of Lavelle's hire as BYU head coach. Uh, they announced this week in the game notes. If you have a chance to read them, you go to byucougars.com. They're going to do different ways to celebrate the life and legacy of the late Lavelle Edwards throughout this upcoming season on the 50 year anniversary the impact by the way that Lavelle had on this BYU football program I don't think it can be overstated it truly was a transformation for this program they they were awful awful for 50 years before that and then in the 50 years since they have been a, a top 10 in terms of overall wins uh in the entire country it's just incredible the before and then the post Lavelle or the the before Lavelle and then Lavelle and let post Lavelle the 50 years before 50 years after are just night and day different and so one of those crazy crazy things uh, I also have one other point I want to talk about with Kalani Satake with regards uh to this matchup with Baylor that we'll get to here in just a moment I do need to get a word in though about our friends over at bet online bet online is the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds lines and games right now our friends over at bet online be you opened up as a 12 and a half point favorite over usf when they first officially announced the line uh last check byu is actually dropped to just a 12 point favorite so a little bit of money coming in on usf be what you still expected to win it handily if you want to take advantage of that uh, you can find reviews and news for every league including major league baseball nfl NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, college sports, and even golf. It's all available at Bet Online as they continue to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have got you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. It's all courtesy of your friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show and tuning in. It's so much fun to be with you guys. Uh, and I mentioned that I wanted to talk a little bit about what Kalani Satake had to say with regards to the matchup with Gary Bohannon. He talked about the fact that his poise is there. Uh, this is a guy who beat BYU. You, you got to think he's coming into this matchup thinking, I beat these guys last year. Why can't I do the same thing this year? Uh, the the talent around Bohannon, well, okay, there's a different story there because I thought Baylor was loaded to the hilt with talent last year that he took advantage of as the starter for the Bears. USF, eh, I got my questions about how much talent is actually around him, but Saturday is going to be a proving day. There's no doubt about that. And BYU will be led by some of their stellar talent into this uh, season and uh, going up against a guy like uh, Gary Bohannon, led by their uh, senior, well, not their seniors, but their team captains they announced yesterday. Uh, BYU's announced uh, eight captains as well as co-captains representing the offense, defense, and special teams for the upcoming season. The team captains have eight uh, on the list. Preseason All-American offensive lineman Clark Barrington and Blake Freeland, along with quarterback Jaron Hall and wide receiver Puka Nakua will represent the BYU offense. Linebackers Keenan Peely and Peyton Wilgar, along with defensive lineman Lorenzo Fawatea and defensive back Caleb Hayes were voted as the captains of the defense. Now, 
Of those eight, I don't think there's necessarily any major surprise outside of one guy, and I already mentioned him earlier on. Caleb Hayes being named as a team captain for BYU is a mark of massive respect, I feel like, for a guy who transferred into BYU last offseason, really uh, took to that cornerback position after some injuries hit the Cougars early on last year and made it his own. Caleb has made quite the impression during his time at BYU, as evidenced by this, him being named as a team captain for the BYU football program. But I think it's really, really cool to see a guy like that who came into a program that he had no previous affiliation with, didn't really probably know much about Provo beyond what the coaches were telling him when they were recruiting him out of the transfer portal, but he has come in and been lights out. Any of you who watched the interview that I had with him and Malik Moore on last Friday's podcast, if you want to go back and watch, if you haven't watched it yet, absolutely hilarious. It, one of my favorite interviews I have ever done. And Caleb Hayes, he just stole the show. He wasn't even supposed to originally be part of that interview. It's supposed to be me and Malik Moore, but Malik, uh, Keanu, uh, not Keanu, uh, Caleb was walking by. What did Keanu come from? Keanu Saliapaga? I don't know. But uh, Caleb was walking by and Malik kind of dragged him into the interview and it just, it, it went absolutely incredibly well. And I think it's fantastic that Caleb Hayes was named as the team captain. It's a massive mark, mark of respect for that young man. Now they also announced what they call their co-captains. If any of these captains get injured during the season, for example, last year, they lost both uh, Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely to injury. Well, should injuries strike any of these captains, these co-captains will step up in their stead. So on the offense, uh, that includes wide receiver Gunnar Romney, tight end Dallin Holker, center Connor Pay, as well as running backs Lopini Katoa and Chris Brooks, linebacker Ben Bywater, defensive end Tyler Batty, cornerback D'Angelo Mandel, and safety Malik Moore will be representing the defense unless the special teams feel like they're being left in that left out. Ryan Rico has been named an assistant co-captain representing the special teams for BYU. So this is awesome. They're, they're like, there's a lot of guys on this list. Is that like, what? I just listed 16 guys or something like that. 17 guys, uh, whether you're a captain or a co-captain. But the nice part is it's a mark of respect and a big time opportunity for these players to go out and represent their teammates. It's that kind of the ultimate mark of respect from your teammates when you're voted a team captain or a co-captain here. It means you have stood out to your teammates and you should take pride in the fact that they believe that you are one of the best representatives for this squad. And it also gives them motivation to live up to being that captain. You have to go out there and prove it every single day when you're out there on the football field because you don't want to be the guy who is leading uh, from behind, pushing from behind. It's easier to lead from the front than it is to push from behind. I know that's a leadership axiom that we hear all the time if you've ever been to a leadership conference or anything of that ilk. But that that's the stuff that I really like is seeing these guys get the opportunity to wear that captain C on their uniform for the assistant co-captains or, or they, no, they're co-captains. I think they've put the A on the uniforms. We'll see how BYU operates this year. But I would assume uh, based on what I saw last year, uh, the captains wore the C and the uh, co-captains wore that A on their uniform. And, it's a really, really cool mark of respect. Now, you can only take four guys out uh, for the pregame uh, coin toss. We'll see how many BYU sends out there of their eight captains, but that was a really cool gesture, and obviously Kalani Satake believes in all of these guys and their teammates do as well. All right, there is one more thing we need to talk about with regards to BYU football. It's an opportunity to support the BYU football program and its players via a name, image, and likeness agreement uh, with a new uh, program, not program, new company here locally. We'll talk about that next. We also need to catch up on BYU women's soccer. They had their home opener at Southfield. We'll catch up on how that went for BYU as we continue on right here. Unlocked on, on Cougars. Want to remind you guys to check out the Locked On Big 12 podcast. It's absolutely phenomenal. They, they cover everything. Josh Neighbors is the host over there, uh, making sure you're up to speed on everything going on with the Big 12 Conference. You can get it free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like this one on YouTube or on whichever podcast provider you happen to, to, to favor, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts. You, you guys know the drill. So support that podcast and also support ours. Leave us a rating and review if you're watching this on uh, uh, Leave us a, a like and a, and a comment or two if you're watching this on YouTube. And also, if you're uh, listening to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc., leave us a comment, a rating, and review. Those five-star ratings, especially on Apple Podcasts, they're absolutely critical to us continuing to build this audience. And you guys have been phenomenal out there in Cougar Nation, if I'm being frank. You, your guys' support has made my world go round. And the thousands of you, I, I mean this sincerely, there are thousands of you who tune into this podcast daily. And it, it, it it's awesome. It, it's great to hear from you guys. I'm hearing from all over the country, literally international uh, listeners out there. Uh, guys like Glenn Lumen, who's over in the Philippines. I've got people uh, messaging me from Europe. It's, 
I know that a Wayne fag, uh, for example, he's actually an old compatriot, a classmate of my mother's funny enough. And listens to this podcast. He said he started listening to this when he was living in Mexico a year and a half ago. So Wayne, a shout out to you and a shout out to everybody out there for your support of the podcast. No matter if you start your day, end your day, or just listen to this during your day. Thank you for tuning into Locked On Cougars. All right, a couple of things before we go on today's show. Let's start off with the football side of things. Uh, BYU has officially announced, uh, the, well, actually, BYU has announced it. The Rook Agency has, has announced that they are partnering with 94 BYU football players. It's a team-wide deal for the most part. I know there are 123 guys on BYU's roster, but 94 BYU football players have signed a name, image, and likeness agreement with the Rook Agency to be their... Uh, to be a gear provider. If you want to have a player like Mason Wake or, I don't know, uh, Clark Barrington, who's on this show. I know Clark's part of this as well with the Rook Agency. If you want a jersey, a sweatshirt with their name and number on the back and some BYU swag, royal blue, white, uh, black, I don't know what color you want. Rook Agency has got a deal for you guys. And the best part is there's a huge opportunity for you to cash in on this because BYU players do get a portion of the proceeds of all of the sales on this. But, If you want to be a part of this, there is a pre-order that is taking place that ends tomorrow. So if there is a player that you favor, whether it's, I don't know, Tyler Batty, uh, Keenan Peely, Jake Oldry, I don't know who who your favorite player on the BYU roster is, and you want a a t-shirt, a jersey, a, a I don't know, a sweatshirt with their name and number on it, get to Rook Agency. It's R U K E agency, Rook agency on social media, or just search it out on uh, social media or on Google and you can uh, cash in now. Like I said, the the pre-order closes tomorrow, Wednesday at midnight. Uh, So if you want to get some of that gear, get on it now. Like I said, the best part is every player who you buy a piece of gear for, you get, uh, you get it, they get a percentage of that money sent directly to them via that NIL deal that Rook has with these BYU players. It's so cool to see all these different opportunities for BYU and and if you do miss out, I can assure you, I've already talked to the Rook guys, the guys over at Rook. They said they will have another gear drop at midseason, but it will not be until midseason. So if you want to get on it, get to Rook Agency, get your uh, submissions in. I'm also going to tag this in the in the show notes if you want to get to it. It's Rook Sports, R-U-K-E Sports dot com slash B-Y-U. If you want to get to that pre-order right away, like I said, I'll drop a link in the show notes if you want to get to that there. So really cool thing. And Props to Rook Agency. It's similar to Built Bar. They said that they believe it's the first team-wide uh, deal in that respect uh, for gear for team players. So they said, yeah, I'm talking to them earlier today. I'm just making sure that, yeah. So we believe it to be the first team-wide licensed apparel deal in college football. I got to give mad props to BYU. They've been very good about this name, image, and likeness stuff, allowing players to benefit from themselves personally, but at the same time, making sure they spread the love around the roster. So get to Rook Agency, support BYU football players, and if you want to get some of that gear, get on it now. Because like I said, that pre-order ends tomorrow night at midnight. All right, final note before we go here is BYU women's soccer ranked number nine in the country, tied number 25 Colorado 2-2 in their home opener at Southfield yesterday afternoon. Uh, There was an interesting quote in the release from BYU here from head coach Jennifer Rockwood. He said, it's certainly very disappointing, a a very disappointing result after giving it a really good effort. And I thought we played some really good soccer out there. We came out and created tons of opportunities, but when you can't score goals, especially when you're getting great looks, that is going to be a problem for us. It's happened now three games in in a row where we've had chances in the first half and we just haven't been able to capitalize on those. So we have a lot of finishing to work on. Now that's kind of the bugaboo that BYU as they try to make another run at the college cup this season uh, that they, I think we all saw, and if you paid attention to women's soccer for BYU is that they did not have a lot of their goal scoring output coming back this season. I think it was somewhere in the 40% range. So they lost a, a lot of goals last year. And uh, two of them, uh, Cameron Tucker, as well as Michaela Coulihan, uh, Michaela Clough, I guess now, uh, they're both playing in the NWSL, which is professional soccer here in the United States for for the women's side of things. Uh, they lost a lot of goal scoring off of last year's squad. And I think Coach Rockwood realizes they've got to be more clinical in front of goals. So hopefully they can get better about that. The two goals, obviously, you don't throw that back in the 2-2 draw. You'll take it, but it's your home opener. You want to win all those games at home, but uh, they'll be back at it later this week. We'll have more details on that later on in this week. By the way, also congratulations to Jamie Shepard. She was named the West Coast Conference Offensive Player of the Week, the league announced yesterday as well. She scored both goals in the 2-0 win at Ohio State on Friday. It was a Friday? Yeah, Friday. 
for the Cougars last week. So big ups uh, to her on winning that award. All right, that is going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Cougars. A big thank you for your support as always. Thank you for making us your first listen today. Want to encourage you guys to go make your second listen, the ultimate pro football preview. It's going to be an eight episode extravaganza that's getting you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey NFL Insiders are all combining into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for the ultimate pro football preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, that'll do it for us. Have a great rest of your day, everybody, and hope you guys are all doing well. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.